In this lecture, we're going to discuss a concept which not many people are very familiar with. And that concept is the one of verbals. Now, verbals uh, may sound weird, but they're quite simple. Uh, it's just when you take a verb and you transform it into a noun, an adjective, or an adverb. So to repeat, a verbal is when you transform a verb into a noun, an adjective, or an adverb. Okay, so a ver when a verb becomes not a verb. Okay? Uh, and these are rather important because when we're analyzing sentence structure, verbs are really one of the keys to unlocking a lot of these sentences. So you really need to know what is a verb and what is not a verb. Okay, and there are uh, really four types of verbals, uh, gerunds, infinitives, present participles, and past participles. Okay, so let's begin with gerunds. Uh, gerunds are probably the easiest ones to understand uh, because... You know, the form is very simple. You simply add an ing to the end of a verb. So, for example, eat would become eating. Gerunds are also easy to understand because by adding the ing, you're simply turning the verb into a noun. So, in these examples below, you can see the sentence, eating is my favorite activity. Eating here is a noun. It's the act of eating. The act of eating is my favorite activity. Or, I like eating. I like Coca-Cola. I like French fries. I like eating. Okay, so all those things are nouns which act as the object of what you like. Okay, so quite straightforward. You add an ing to a verb and it can act as a noun. The second type of verbal is the infinitive. Okay, and infinitive is formed by adding to in front of a verb. So when you say to eat rather than eat, you've just transformed a verb into an infinitive. Okay, and infinitives are rather flexible. Infinitives can act as nouns, adjectives, or adverbs. Okay, so here are some examples. Uh, just like before I said eating is my favorite activity, I can also say to eat is my favorite activity. To eat is my favorite activity. To eat is a noun. It's a thing, it's the thing that is my favorite activity. Okay? Or how about, I'm happy. Why am I happy? I'm happy to meet you. So to meet here is an adverb describing why I'm happy. Finally, I have an example of an infinitive as an adjective. I need a reason. Okay, and to go describes the noun reason. I need a reason to go. Now we'll pause here for a second just to say that um, you know it's not a big deal to try and distinguish between nouns, adjectives, or adverbs. You don't have to do it. Uh, as long as you know that infinitives are not verbs, and especially you know that you're especially aware that they can be nouns, the rest of the stuff doesn't really matter. Okay, we don't really care usually about the distinction of whether it's an adjective or an adverb. Okay, so just remember, infinitives when you have a to in front of a verb, it's not a verb. Okay. Next we have present participles. Okay, now a participle is when you turn a verb into an adjective, and there are two types: present and past. So we're looking at the present participle first, and a present participle is formed by adding ing to the end of a verb. Okay, so you'll notice that it's actually the same form as a gerund. Okay, you just add an ing to the verb, so eat becomes eating. But in this case, rather than being a noun, it acts as an adjective. Some examples here would be, don't touch an eating animal. Okay, not a sleeping animal, not a friendly animal, but an eating animal. Don't touch an eating animal. Or, studying students shouldn't be disturbed. Right? Here the main sentence is students shouldn't be disturbed. But I'm just saying what kind of students? Not sleeping students, not lazy students, but uh, studying students. Studying students shouldn't be disturbed. Why? Because they're studying. Studying describes the students. Eating describes the animal. Okay, so those are present participles. We also have past participles. Okay, and past participles are also when you take a verb and turn them into adjectives. But they're slightly different, okay? They're slightly different in form and in meaning. Now, first of all, a past participle is usually formed by adding ed to the end of a verb. Or, you know, it could also be in a regular form. So a regular one would be cook into cooked. It looks exactly the same as the past tense of the verb. But sometimes we have irregular forms, such as eat and eaten, right? I would say eat, I ate. I have eaten. Okay, eat, ate. Eaten is the past participle. Whereas in the case of cook, it's cook, cooked, cooked. 
Okay, so uh, they do function as adjectives, but they're slightly different, and here's why. So here we're saying the carrots are cooked. So cooked still describes the carrots. The difference is that it's describing something that was done to the carrots rather than describing what the carrots are doing. Okay, and that makes sense because if you think about it, doing is an ing word, whereas done is the past participle. So if you're doing something, you use the present participle. If something was done to it, you use the past participle. Okay, so I prefer cooked carrots. This is an eaten apple. Okay, it's not a it's not an uneaten apple. It's an eaten apple. All right, because a lot of people find this kind of tricky, I'm going to give you a few more examples here and compare and contrast the present versus the past participles. So let's take this first verb, bore, you know, to bore somebody. When you say boring, she is boring, it means she, it's describing her because she's doing the action, right? She's doing the action of bore. So she is boring because she's like nagging me, or rather, I should say she's, she's lecturing and droning on and on, right? She's making me feel bored. So that, of course, is the past participle. Because she's boring, she's making other people feel bored, right? So bored describes someone who's had that action done unto them. He's annoying, right? So he keeps on nagging me, so he's annoying. Whereas he's annoyed because he's, he has been nagged. So annoying describes him doing the action. Annoyed describes him having the action done unto him. One more example the verb tire, you are tiring, you make me feel tired, so you are tiring, or you are tired. Because of things, some things that happened to you, you feel tired now, you're tired. So a tiring lecture, a tired student. Okay, now bonus question here for you guys, uh, two sentences here, fighting lions is dangerous, and fighting lions are dangerous. Which of these two sentences is correct? I'll let you stew on that for a few seconds. Okay, the answer is that both are correct. The difference is in the first sentence, fighting is a gerund, right? It's the fighting, the act of fighting lions is dangerous. Not the act of feeding them, not the act of watching them, but the act of fighting them is dangerous, right? So the subject is fighting and the verb is is. Fighting lions is dangerous. On the other hand, if I say fighting lions are dangerous, here fighting is a participle because I'm describing the lions, right? What kind of lions are dangerous? Not tame lions, not sleeping lions, not dead lions. No, fighting lions are dangerous, okay? So the answer as to whether an ing is a gerund or a participle really just depends on the context, right? Is it the act of doing that thing or is it describing something which is doing that action? Okay, I hope this lecture was helpful. Um, you know, it's probably not gonna stick immediately. You're gonna see this repeatedly uh, through many different types of questions. So, you know, we'll make a note of every time we run into these different types of verbals. And, uh, you know, it'll pay dividends. If you really familiarize, familiarize yourself with these uh, verbals, you'll start to understand the structure of English sentences much, much better.